a mini PC. This time, the GMK Tech Nookbox K3 Pro. Yeah. With a 10-core Intel processor, we can look forward to a mini PC great for productivity. But what else can it do? Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble. This mini PC here came to us direct from GMK Tech in purpose for this video review. No money was exchanged and all opinions are our own. So this is the K3 Pro, and as always, GMK Tech do a good job of packaging their products. So it's quite a nice size, and unfortunately it can't fit in your pocket. Unless you have super big pockets like Ronald McDonald. Alright, let's see what else we have in the box. Inside this piece of card here we have a user manual. As we're in Japan, this is in Japanese, Chinese and English. At the bottom of the box we have two more boxes. The first one has a power cable and a HDMI cable. In the other box we have a power adapter. This one's by Hunky and it outputs 19 volts at 6.32 amps and a maximum 120 watts. We also get a VESA mount so we can attach the mini PC to the back of the monitor. And finally, a warranty card. Yeah. yeah! Taking a closer look now, it's pretty tidy. The lid's made of a nice textured plastic. Well, let's have a look around. So we've got a power switch. Great colour. A headphone jack. A Type-C USB 4 port. And two USB 3.2 ports. Over here we have a little pinhole for BIOS reset. On the right side we've got some vents for cooling. Which continues around the back where the air gets blown out. We also have a port for DC in, two HDMI 2.0 ports, two USB 2s, and a one gigabit LAN connector. And who could forget the Kensington lock. Kensington. On the left side, we've got some more vents. And moving to the bottom, we can see this thing is very holy. Like the girl from the petrol station. And finally, the holes for the vase amount. Let's take a look at the size. That probably means nothing. Here's a teabag. This Nookbox K3 Pro is four Roybush teabags big. Taking a look at the specs, this mini PC does pack a punch. The 10 core CPU coupled with 24 gigabytes of DDR5 should make it great for productivity. Our biggest concern, however, is with its GPU. It's going to be interesting to see if 64 EUs is going to be enough to run the latest games. This computer comes with Windows 11 Pro pre installed. Takes around five minutes to get through the initial setting screens and we're straight into Windows. In order to activate it, we need to go online, so we can either use the LAN connection or use Wi-Fi. Connecting to the router, we had no issues whatsoever. And as soon as you connect, your mini PC will get the OK from Microsoft and you're good to go to get Windows updates. In typical use cases like internet browsing or online shopping, this PC does not break a sweat. I'm still trying to find some funny socks on AliExpress, but they're all a bit feminine for my macho physique. As this mini PC has the AV1 codec, 4K streaming and YouTube, works great. And the same applies for Netflix. Create illusions out of a person's own thoughts, memories and experiences even out of a person's own... Let's move on to the benchmarks. The one terabyte NVMe gives us fairly average speeds. It's definitely not using the full capabilities of PCIe 4. And Userbench tells us we have a NUCLEAR SUBMARINE! Watch out, world! Ha ha ha! But the graphics scores are fairly disappointing. The DDR5 memory seems to be clocked down from 6400 MHz, but it's outstanding nonetheless. Here's some 3D mark with TimeSpy. And while the GPU score is half of what we have with the Ryzen 7735HS, this one beats it in both single and multi-core CPU scores. And last up, here's some Cinebench. So what can this PC actually do? Well, Office and Photoshop on the system work rather well, but to really push the CPU, let's see how it works in a digital audio workstation. So the demo song here runs a 30% CPU with no glitches. But let's see how it is if we make a song. We're going to use an audio interface, and this is how we can record vocals and guitar. We'll connect this via USB 2, and we'll use Reaper, mainly because it's great for recording audio. We'll first get our drums in. These are the Tight Studio Drums by Ugritone. We'll set a box here for MIDI, and then program the drums. And once we have the drums, we can add the bass. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, this is sounding pretty good. Now the basics are down, we can add guitar. I'm so naked. I'm really so... A couple of days later, here's the final result. Let's play Doom. Let's play Doom. Share where Doom. And using DaVinci, we even made a video on the same computer. If you want to check it out, links at the top. So, does this play Doom? Very yes. Doom 2. What about Doom 3? Running in 1600 by 1200, it runs okay, with the occasional dips. All units, this is Sergeant Kelly. We're under attack by an unknown enemy force. Fall back to Marine HQ to regroup. Doom 2016. And Doom Eternal. While it doesn't run at a steady 60 FPS, it's certainly playable. Beverly sometimes runs at 60 FPS. Let's have a look at some other games. Castle Crashers. Mr. Bunny Man. CSGO. Pretty jerky at 1080p, so we're gonna have to switch it down to 720. And here's Counter Strike 2. Dota 2. And Total War, Warhammer 2. If you want to see more game testing, please check the link at the top right. We also tested out some emulation on Batacera, and rather than go through every system that it supports, we jumped straight into the deep end with PlayStation 2. It's running fine at native resolution, we're going to upscale it to 1080p, and it's still running buttery smooth. It's some Xbox. Follow me. Nintendo GameCube with F Zero GX. And Wii U. Going full speed. Unfortunately for PlayStation 3, we have to run the emulator in Windows, as Badassara could crash due to an issue with the video card. Using the Vulcan renderer, we do have playable speeds, but with screen distortion at the top right. Change the renderer, we don't get the distortion, but this game in particular runs rather slow. So let's have a look inside. To access the top part, we just pull up on the lid, and it pops straight off. What we have here is kind of interesting, there's a big gap on the left, and there's no slots or connectors. Bit of a missed opportunity here, as we would have loved another NVMe slot. Only one we have here is on the right, and in the centre we have the antenna. This is a 1TB Lexar 610 Pro. And underneath we have the Intel Wi-Fi 6 chip. It's the AX201, and this also has a very thin copper heatsink attached. To take off the bottom, we first need to remove these rubber feet, and take out these four screws and then pull. And very similar to before, there's nothing really we can do here. We can change the thermal paste, but one thing we need to take note of is that this fan is quite large for this case, which should mean a low noise. Here's how it sounds at idle. And now under load. 
So what we have here is a rather quiet mini PC. Here's how much it pulls from the wall at idle. And now onto load. It's about time for the pros and the cons. What we have here is a nice and snappy mini PC. The processor in this small machine make it great for production and emulation. It's quiet and can be a nice PC for the office. Unfortunately, while it can play some games, the GPU simply cannot compete with the Ryzen competition. If it had one more M2 slot built to hook up an eGPU, and the NVMe stick included was not PCA4. So who is the audience for the K3 Pro? While we wouldn't say it's one for the gamers, it's definitely a candidate for someone who wants to make a bit of music. As we finish up, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. All of these lovely people help support the channel and keep us moving and grooving. We make video reviews, tutorials, and help fix them cheap arcade boxes and the F100 Mini. If you want to help support our work, please jump on. Or you could click that like button or check another one of our videos. This has been a Michigan Team Pandory, and I'll catch on the next one. ta -ra. Join me in my car for a massage. It is the Fiat 500 in the car park with the missing door.